Today we're bringing you a big suspension update on Project V8RX7. A long time ago when the car was normal, we put a set of KW Variant 3 coilovers on here. But since then we put the Rocket Bunny wide body kit on here. We've messed around with the motion ratio in the front and we've changed the valving and spring rates on the car. So we'll talk about that. We're also going to talk about how we got the fitment that we wanted up front. The Rocket Bunny kit adds 50 millimeters on each side of the front end of the car here. So we wanted that flush fitment but without using spacers or a super low offset wheel it would mess up the scrub radius. So with the help of Mike Kojima we're going to get underneath the car and show you what we did. For those of you that are regular readers of the site, Mike Kojima is a suspension engineer by trade and he can explain all the changes that we made a lot better than I could in 100 cuts. So Mike, take it away. So this car has some really huge meat on there. The front is an 18 by 11 inch wheel with a 295 3018. This is huge for a car of this size and weight. Controlling this big mass of wheel and tire and all the leverage it creates and stuff is gonna require us to do a bunch of trick things with the suspension. When we went to the uh, Rocket Bunny kit, we didn't want to be like everybody else. You know, like how Dudes will just, uh, you know, maybe they'll put a 10 inch wide front wheel, but they'll put like a 265 and just stretch it. Then put a bunch of spacers. When they space the wheel way out like that, um, they're really uh, increasing the uh, scrub radius of the suspension. So when the tire is pivoting, you know, it's actually getting shoved in an arc rather than pivoting on its axis. So when it's being shoved in an arc, the wheel is taking a big swing in the wheel well. So it, it um, you know, actually will still rub and still hit inside the wheel well. You're putting a tremendous load on the power steering and you're also like not like sitting and turning the car. You're actually like shoving the tires differentially sideways. So you're actually like reducing some of your grip and the car won't turn in very well. And then the final bad thing is like if you're uh, you know, braking on uh, what we call split mu surfaces, or, um, you know, the friction is different on one side of the car than the other. Like, let's say uh, you're braking and one wheel goes into a puddle. With the big scrub radius, you actually have a big uh, lever arm to like pull the wheel out, out of your hands or uh, to actually make the car squiggle around under braking. Yep. So we can't have any of that either. Your scrub radius is figured out by, you draw an imaginary line to the, upper ball joint or spherical bearing is in this case to the center line of that to the center line of this bearing all the way through the wheel to the ground and um, that point where, where the, uh, the imaginary line meets the ground is uh, called the dave point and the distance between the dave point and the center line of the wheel tire is uh, the scrub radius the the stock uh, scrub radius is about uh, three quarters of an inch Instead of piling on long studs and a lot of spacers, we fabricated our own upper and lower control arms. And uh, we basically increased the track width of this car over four inches. And uh, managed to keep the scrub radius to uh, something like an inch and three quarter, which is very reasonable for a, a huge combination like this. Uh, Chris Eimer from Eimer Engineering made these. Uh, Chris is a badass fabricator and he helps Moto IQ with a lot of our uh, fabrication projects. And uh, he made these arms out of 4130 chromoly plate with a, a 125 thou wall thickness. It's all like hand TIG welded, punch for lightness, really cool stuff. And the uh, lower arm you see here is pretty much a piece of art. Like what we wanted to do is keep the uh, stock eccentric adjusters that the uh, cross member uses. Uh, so instead of doing heim joints like what is typically done, we actually use spherical bearings like what you see in off-road trucks. And uh, using the spherical bearings and double shear, uh, like in the cross member, is the strongest way to do it. Like sphericals wouldn't be that strong this far inboard. So uh, we're using uh, the spherical bearings. Outboard we have a, like a heim joint and it's adjustable so we can adjust the camber down there. The upper control arm is also fabricated from 4130 plate. It uses um, heim joints on the inside to adjust uh, camber and caster. Uh, they're held in double shear. And these arms are um, like two inches longer than the stock control arms. Having the longer control arms is the secret to, for us to keep our uh, good scrub radius. 
Because we uh, lengthened the uh, control arms and we have uh, way bigger tires and everything has moved outboard to increase the track width, we've uh, really increased the amount of leverage on the shock. So we had to call our partners KW and uh, go to much stiffer springs and uh, revalve the shocks for more damping. I mean, we're putting approximately 40% more load on the shock. Um, some of the load is due to the increase in motion ratio, but some, some of it's because we're running a really big sticky tire, so we're generating more G-loads and more forces. This car always had this trick, uh, Speedway Engineering Sway Bar. It has an unusual mounting to where it goes through the control arm and mounts from the other side. So uh, everything's slotted and relieved to allow um, the full adjustment of the sway bar plus the uh, other side of the uh, control arm mounting. Another thing that uh, we addressed is uh, bump steer. Now, uh, the RX-7 doesn't have that much bump steer stock, but a lot of guys do engine swaps, they move the rack around, they don't have a clue about the repercussions of that. Uh, so one of the things we've done is we've located the rack and the cross member, uh, so the rack is pretty um, in line with the uh, lower control arm pivots here. Uh, basically what you want to do is make it so the uh, tie rods go in the same plane as the lower control arm so that way the car doesn't uh, steer as the suspension goes through its movement. Another thing we've done here is we've spaced out the uh, outer tie rod because what we're trying to do is get in the same plane as the uh, spherical bearing um, that serves as the lower ball joint. So you can see the spacer here. Uh, we've done that to minimize bump steer. You know, it's not perfect, but we want like clearance with the wheel, and we also want um, some room that we can actually adjust the bump steer with uh, spacers to a degree. So we can get the thing to uh, tow in or tow out under roll. Uh, typically for performance applications, you want the car to slightly tow out under roll rather than tow in but we're gonna to have to do some track testing and see how sensitive this car is. In case we have to go one way or another, there's like room for us to tune it there. So if you thought the front was big, the rear is even bigger. This guy has a 335, 3018. The rim is 18 inches tall and 13 inches wide with a uh, negative 22 millimeter offset. Uh, we increased the rear spring rate um, some and we revalved the rear shocks because the um, wheel itself is uh, bigger, wider, heavier, and more outboard, so we're increasing the motion ratio of the rear suspension. So just a little bit of respringing and revalving from the stock KW uh, rates. Well, thanks for helping me out today, Mike. Um, but you forgot to talk about the HLS system. Oh man, I knew I forgot something. But uh, one of the things about this car is it's so low, uh, especially when the entire Rocket Bunny kit is on the side skirts, our air dam is on, but literally this car is so low that it couldn't get out of the shop. The KW HLS kit is actually uh, really slick. You just hit a switch, the car goes up a couple of inches. Um, it's hydraulic, so you just need a uh, small hydraulic reservoir and pump, and the box is only about this big. It's really quiet and it's fast. And then Get all that space now. It goes from low to dune buggy in a couple of seconds without too much noise. And it also doesn't affect how the coilovers work one bit. Well, thanks again for your help, man. Appreciate it. Cool. Well, let's get this thing on the road.